customer communication management company Twilio is down 86% off its all-time highs. The company is utilizing artificial intelligence in its offerings to enterprises, which is helping to increase revenue. The new products have helped Twilio increase its customer count and the net revenue retention, which is one way to evaluate customer spending patterns over time. In this video, I'm going to highlight several reasons why I think Twilio could make an excellent investment at current valuations. This is one of those high risk, high reward potential situations because of how disruptive artificial intelligence could be to Twilio's business model. Let's take a closer look. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. So like I highlighted at the top of the video, Twilio's stock is down 86% off its high water marks reached in late 2020, early 2021. The bulk of those losses coming before 2024. 2024 has been a relatively decent year for Twilio's stock performance. And one of the reasons why the company has done relatively well is because of reaccelerating revenue growth here at 4.239 billion in the most recent trailing 12 month period. But more than just the revenue growth, it's been its harnessing of artificial intelligence and then the proven market performance with customer count increasing and net revenue retention increasing in the latest quarter above 100%. That's really relieved some investors who were concerned that AI was going to be a significant negative to its business. Now, investors are coming around to the story that maybe Twilio harnesses AI and makes its product offering that much better and enterprises go to Twilio to harness AI for their customer relationship management, which by the way, it seems like it's been a race to the bottom in recent decades with companies fighting with each other, seeing who can deliver the worst customer service possible. And the reasoning behind this is they just want to save on costs in this category by so much that it's really degraded the customer service across so many businesses worldwide. There are few businesses that deliver good customer service and those that do really stand out among others because there's been such a race to the bottom in this space. So it would be a relief if Twilio can harness the power of AI to deliver better customer relationship or customer communication management service. It's an area that's ripe for disruption because of how bad it is right now. There's so much room for improvement that this could be an area to benefit. Now, the primary reason why investors have been happy with Twilio's revenue growth is because it's been higher quality revenue growth. Twilio hasn't chased growth at all costs. And you can see that demonstrated in the dramatic improvement in its operating profit margin. The turnaround started to happen in 2022. And that's when it happened for many tech companies when interest rates started rising. Many of these tech companies started to focus on costs. And thankfully so, because they've improved their operating profit margin from negative 30% all the way up to negative 4.84%. You've heard me talk a lot about not minding if a company has a negative profit margin, as long as they're demonstrating progress towards profitability. And I see clear signs here from Twilio that they're demonstrating progress towards profitability. The cost controls have paid off, and now these revenues are coming at higher profit margins, and that's been great news for the company. Similar story with its cash flow from operations showing dramatic improvement here since 2022 bottoms, and it's now sustainably positive at 19.6%. That means the company does not need to go to investors to raise capital. It can fund itself and use its current operations to improve the business. If it needs more money to invest in the business, it can generate that capital through internally created cash flows. And that's a lower cost of capital than if Twilio needed to go out and continuously raise more capital from investors who would want increasingly high rates as they become increasingly disappointed with the company that cannot sustain itself. Looking ahead, the analysts on Wall Street that are following Twilio stock expect it will grow its earnings per share by 20% per year over the next five years. Now that's a robust growth of earnings per share over the next five years for Twilio, there is 
high levels of uncertainty around this earnings per share forecast, meaning some companies, let's say, for instance, you're looking at McDonald's, right? And their expectations are for earnings per share growth of, let's say, 5% over the next five years. The variability among those estimates won't be that high. You might get 8% or you might get 2%. That's how wide of a variation you'll get with McDonald's because in good times and in bad times, people eat about the same amount of McDonald's. It doesn't change all that much. But with a company like Twilio and looking ahead the next five years, you might get earnings per share growth of 50% or you might get earnings per share growth of negative 50%. That's how wide the range of outcomes are possible for a company like Twilio in the market environment it's facing. So while the expected value is 20% over the next five years. Remember, within that is a wide range of potential outcomes that ha could happen for Twilio. That's why I said at the top of the video, this is one of those high risk, high reward situations for long term investing. In addition to improving profit margins, improving cash flow, Twilio is improving its return on invested capital up to negative 5%, 5.6% up from negative 20% in 2017. So far, in all of the metrics I've considered for Twilio, whether it's revenue, operating profit margin, cash flow from operations, return on invested capital, Twilio has demonstrated excellent improvement. Now, the numbers themselves are not good, right? Negative 5% is not a good return on invested capital number. Negative 5% operating profit margin is not a good number for an operating profit margin. The cash flow from operations is solid at 20%, but the operating margin and the ROIC at these levels is not good. But what is good is the demonstrated progress in these metrics. Meaning if you look five years ahead and the company performs as expected, if it continues on this trend, then it could be in a position where its profit margins are much higher five years from now. Its ROIC is much higher five years from now. And the business is performing much better five years from now because it's laid the foundation for profitable growth. It remains to be seen if they will achieve those targets, but they're well on their way to get to that point. And that's what I like to see with growth companies. That's what I like to see is the path towards profitability. You don't have to be profitable just yet. And finally, the stock is relatively cheap. It's trading at a forward price to earnings of just 16 of just 16. Now this forward PE ratio of 16 is less than the expected growth rate in EPS over the next five years, which is one of the rules of thumbs I look at when I'm considering valuation and whether or not it's cheap or expensive. I'm comparing it against the next five years EPS expected as one of my comparisons. And if the next five years EPS growth rate expected is higher than the forward PE multiple, which in this case it is, I take it as a sign that the company could be undervalued. And when I check the other things I usually check, which with Twilio looked good, it confirms my initial suspicion that the company is undervalued. So Twilio is one beaten down growth stock that investors who have a high tolerance for risk, you guys can consider adding this to your portfolios. Before I let you go, let me tell you about the greatest deal on YouTube. With just a click of a button, you can get free financial analysis from a professor with decades of investing experience. So what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you again soon.